Real E Savvy Radio, your guide to more informed home ownership. Today, Christopher Cox is joined by Deputies Bircham and Bethay from the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, Civil, Evictions, and Execution Section. You'll learn more about the Sheriff Sales. Let's get started. Real E Savvy is brought to you by Exit Realty of the Carolinas. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe in making dreams come true. We believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is, right there. is right there. And we'll help you find it. Thoroughly trained, passionately committed, and always on your side. You can count on us every step of the way. And you thought we just sold real estate. We are Exit Realty. Think smart. Think Exit. Good morning. Welcome to the first show of 2019 of Real E Savvy. Hopefully today I have a show that everybody wanted to see. Everybody always talks about the sheriff's sale. Anytime you talk about real estate, somebody has an inkling of an idea about investing in real estate, they talk about how do I get involved with sheriff's sales. And really I don't know. Kind of, sort of, but not the intimate details. So today I asked the Sorry, the Forsyth, I see almost slipped, Forsyth County, I live in Sorry County, Forsyth County Sheriff's Department to come in, these guys have been there forever, to tell me and tell you, to help make you real e-savvy about the process of going through the sheriff's sale process. Today, Officer Bur Burcham, Burcham mm -hmm. and Bethay um, are here to help. So if you guys want to introduce yourself, you told me about how long you've been here, but you can tell the audience too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to look at the, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've um, been at the uh, Forsyth County Sheriff's Office uh, 12, about 12 years. I've uh, been through uh, several different divisions, SRO division, patrol, uh, community policing, civil, uh, and then came back to the civil um, in the evictions and executions section. And I'm Sergeant Bethay. I've been in the sheriff's office for 24 years. Started in the detention center, and now I'm in the civil judicial civil section. So, is there like two different aspects of that sheriff's cell process that you got? Or you just work hand in hand? We work, work, hand, work, in work hand, hand in hand. hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, and you may be able to. Um, I want to talk about getting have going through the process of obtaining and how to avoid going through. I don't know if the second part is, is really you guys forte, but the, the, as far as somebody being involved with the actual purchase from the sheriff's cell, um, do people have to appear? How, how does the whole process start and, and do you have to have a pre-approval? How do you go in and start with the sheriff's cell process? Yeah. And when I say pre-approval, I mean on a mortgage or, you know, right. you know that cash in hand, how does it? Well, the, the sheriff's sale starts with consist of a superior district or magistrate court orders coming from the courts saying that a creditor owes uh, certain business, um, medical bills, credit cards. And that's where the sheriff's sale starts from the courts. And it comes down to the civil judicial service section. Okay, so when when you say um, credit card, I don't want to scare anybody. That would have to go through a pretty extensive process. Yes, yeah, so the process you know, for, for it to be a, a credit card that would become a leanable item. And, yes. Okay. Yeah, well, they're they're usually high debts um, that that have you know the credit card company has has exhausted all their leads and collected that judgment, and then they take it to the court, and the court issues the judgment against the. Okay. Which had, which had started, which initiated, because you guys are tech, real technical on that uh, part, uh -huh. with a lawsuit. The yes. credit card, yes. the credit card company would have had to have sued the consumer. Yes. yes. But it's more. There, is there? There's a difference between the tax and the judicial, judicial or the civil side. Am I correct? Is it okay. like there could be a tax sale and a, a property lien sale? The tax. If I'm understanding what you're what you're asking, um, the the tax sale is usually for taxes owed. Right. Uh, the tax 
um, department handles, you know, handles most of the Department of Revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, they handle most of those sales. Uh, they do their, you know, their own most of the time. Um, they will go out and seize property. They do it under different guidelines and different statutes um, that want them to take your property. So it's 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 like a um, a federal or state. You know, other than uh, you know, we're county, but they're they're more like a federal or state, and they don't have have all the all of the necessary paperwork before they can lean on your property. It's the taxes. Yeah, I'm yeah, it's the taxes. <laughs> they, they don't have to have all the court orders and things. Okay. That that you know we have to have to levy on your property. Now, is there a certain date of the month that these are done every month? Or is it? No, you know? it's not done every month. It just depends on when we have property to, to levy on. Uh, <clears throat> there's no certain date um, every month. We, it just depends on when we when we levy on the property, and we have certain guidelines that you have to go through. Um, you know, the, the DMV uh, requires us to have at least you know all of their paperwork uh, at least 20 days um, to get their paperwork back to them. Uh, and send back to us to know that we're going to sell that pro uh, the vehicles. Okay. Uh, and then on uh, real property, we have to post it. Uh, it has to be posted in the newspaper, also uh, at the courthouse. Uh, and to do it, you have to do it two consecutive weeks. Um, so that that brings the sale, you know, on out um, because newspapers, you know, uh, you know, we're getting away from it a little bit. Yeah. But they still the newspapers out there, so we have to post that in the newspaper. So that's why it drags it out a little longer. You know, usually about you know usually about thirty days. Yeah. So so is there, your, your website can somebody pay attention to your website and know the pay attention to our website. There is a section on there uh, which is auction. public auctions. Public auctions. Uh, that, I mean, what's the to, website? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the website, Forsyth County Sheriff Office website. Once they go on to Forsyth County Sheriff Office website, there'll be a drop down box with so services and drop box show auction. And they can look and see what all the sales we have and the dates. And also, we have pictures on the website of what, what property we are selling, also. And so maybe someone can do a research on whether it's a real property or personal property. They can do a research on the DMP, whatever. So, is there any opportunity for someone to go in and inspect the property on the inside prior to the sheriff's sale? No, sir. It's on the date of the sale. They can come a little earlier. We have our sale on 12 noon. Uh, we start at 12 noon on, on the day of the sale, and it'll show the date on the website. They can come early, like 11.30, and they can walk around and look, look over the property, whatever, when we do a personal property. Now, real property is a little different. Real property, we do this auction at the courthouse. And what we have paperwork and showing them what is the property description of, and that's on the website also. But they can come down on the real property, say at the courthouse, and just ask questions about it. So, do they have? Is does a consumer have any? And just you know, speaking about real property at this point, any recourse if there's something defective about the property that they purchase? Well, we all sell, shirt sale, we sell as is. Uh, there's no warranties uh, as is. That's what we sell on properties too. And, and so I walk into a share sale and, and I'm, I'm going through the bidding process and say just using a hypothetical number of fifty thousand dollars that I, I have the winning bid. What happens next? On a real property sale, we have to have a ten day upset bid. Uh, once the sale is complete on that date, uh, we sent to the clerk office. It was called a ten day upset bid, where another bidder uh, could come in and bid on the same property. Oh, yeah. uh, to the highest to that property that on money and what that do the 10 day starts again another person could come in and bid again on this only real property so this real property sale can go on and on until the complete of the sale and that comes from the uh, court of superior court they would let us know that the sale has been confirmed and then once you uh, get your confirmed sale the sheriff do what we call the sheriff deed on a real property sale and we the sheriff and our county attorney do a sheriff deed sign it off and then you bring your monies down to the, the, clerk, the uh, sheriff office and then we'll render you over the deed and the property belongs to you. But when they, they start the offset bid, isn't there a deposit made at that point? Yes, there is a deposit made on the offset bid. How much is the last bid is? Okay, so the first bid was, is a person. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sir. 
No, no, go ahead. And the first bid could be like, for example, two thousand dollars to the highest bidder. Okay. The next bid can come in two days later within a ten day period and do a three thousand dollars. They have to put a certain percentage down. Oh, okay, a per and, yeah. and is that a set percentage or does that vary? Uh it varies. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it varies on different properties. Now, personal property, they take they take possession of it that day. That day. Okay. Any vehicles or anything like that, you know, you take possession of it then. It, there's no upset bid process for personal property, such as vehicles or any other thing we have. What happens if... A couple questions. What happens if nobody bids? Like, is there a... a stash of, of real and personal property sitting around that... It hasn't been bid on a purchase. What happens after that? No, project? we don't have any any now. We will postpone it um, one time um, to if we if no bidders show up or if just one bidder shows up. Uh, you know, we have to have you know two bidders to have an auction. Um, so you know, if just one bidder shows up, we'll postpone it. Uh, Trying to get more bidders there the second time. Uh, if you know. Um, that way, you know, we, we usually get rid of the property. Usually, you know, um, people show up to our sales and, you know, we have pretty good turnout so far. Now, I, and, now the second question that, that popped in my mind was, mm -hmm. I heard a rumor that once you go through the, the, the initial bidding process on the real property and there's a 10 day period, you actually have a legal in the state of North Carolina ownership stake where you could actually start the process of selling that property in your name. Is that accurate? Like you could put that house on the market because you have an equitable piece into after the ten day after the ten day upset bid. While it's in the upset bid, you don't have you don't have um, actual a deed to that property um, after the upset bid is is of course you know because if if you if you win the bid today and then you put it on for sale tomorrow it's re technically not your property because you don't know somebody could come in on the ninth day or tenth day before the time limit and you know put an upset bid on it. so then there again you know um, it just depends on you know how the consumer wants to you know, how the person bidding on it wants to wants to take that chance you know if they okay. know they're going to bid you know whatever you know that last upset bid is you know then you know if they're willing to spend whatever kind of money they want then yeah you could probably do that but it's really technically not yours until you get the sheriff's deed and that and i excuse me if you already answered this how long mm -hmm. does that pro take to get that sheriff's sale deed after you have that t after the last after the last sale the uh the the courts, uh, Superior Court, have to do a confirm. Normally, it takes probably in less than two by ten days okay. because we have to have to do a, a county uh, search, and uh, the sheriff has to sign off, and all our county attorney has to look at it over too before we do the final uh, deed. So when they, when somebody buys it through your process, that title search, everything there, yes, they, they have a, yes. they, uh, they don't know whether the house is is has plumbing, heating, or electric, but they know they have a clear title. <laughs> right. You do, you do your research on okay. any any uh, property that we have, real or personal property. Uh, the you know buyer needs to do their research before uh, you know they bid on it at auction, because like he said before, it's it's as is. You know, no warranties or anything else. If it you know if the vehicle, you know we can we can probably tell you uh, when we get like a vehicle or something that the vehicle does run but we don't know what other kind of mechanical problems or anything like that uh, you're just buying it to you know buyer beware but do your research okay in the age of technology is it has the share sale process moved to a point where somebody can go online and bid for the property no sir personal uh, or we real we still have uh, we still, even though the age of technology is caught up, we still don't have it online. They have to be present at the sheriff's sale, uh, wherever we hold the auction at. Real property is sold at the courthouse, um, and personal property, uh, such as vehicles or other things like that, are, are held at a specific location, usually our impound lot, uh, where we have, you know, but just look on the, uh, look on the web, our website, um, FCSO. Uh, dot us 
and it will tell you exactly exactly where the cell is located. Would you say that website one more time? FCSO.us. Thank you. Yes. Acceptable forms of payment. Okay, I come. We, it. Yes, we accept cash. <laughs> uh, we also accept uh, certified checks, okay. uh, money orders. So, at the end of this process, I'm a consumer. I went to the bank to put, I don't have cash. And we've gone through the upset bit with like a, at the end. Can I come with a mortgage approval? And would you guys wait out? Is there a, a process that it can be delayed while I go through the process of having my mortgage closed? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It can't. It can't. We, we accept at the end of the 10 day process of the upset bids, once you are uh, the winning bidder, uh, you have to pay that, that um, loan in full. So, you know, you do, like I said, do your, do your research, do your, get your money in order before bidding on the sheriff's sale. Yes. Okay. It can't be, it can't be that time. <laughs> Cash rules everything. Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Again. All right. Well, again, thank you, Officer Bethea. Yes, sir. And thank, thank you, you, Officer Bertram. Bertram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank yes, you for helping come in and making my audience real easy. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe in making dreams come true. We believe we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Is right there. And we'll help you find it. Thoroughly trained, passionately committed and always on your side. You can count on us. Every step of the way. And you thought we just sold real estate. We are Exit Realty. Think smart. Think Exit. RealESavvy.com has resources to help you become more informed about home ownership. Visit the website and stay tuned for the next Real eSavvy radio broadcast with Christopher Cox every fourth Sunday at 9 a.m. Real eSavvy Radio is a production of RealEsavvy.com and is produced through the facilities of Southern Broadcast Media, LLC. Real eSavvy is brought to you by Exit Realty of the Carolinas.